The Mona Lisa. What makes art famous? Hi, everybody. Welcome. Stay tuned for discussion on Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Ever wonder how artists like Andy Warhol got to be so hugely famous and well loved? Stardom requires skill, passion, dedication. This is not a discussion about Andy Warhol or technical attributes required for art production, but a study of key traits that help one artist eventually achieve fame. Who can be an artist? Anyone with the right mindset and drive can be an artist. In these challenging times, it's hard to stay motivated. Drive and skill are two elements essential to becoming an artist. Celebrities, musicians, motivational speakers, and visual artists deal with numerous persistent obstacles, as privacy issues and competition, to remain popular. Renaissance artists had it tough, as Leonardo da Vinci. Recently, his Mona Lisa was valued at six hundred and fifty million. What made this painting so valuable? Although da Vinci did not face the dilemmas modern artists do, he was conflicted with the censoring customs of his context. Yet he carved a name for himself. What made da Vinci stand apart from his peers? There were three things besides skill, talent, and passion that initially hurdled this artist to eventual fame. Branding in the Renaissance worked the same way we do it today. One factor that shot Da Vinci to stardom was privileged identity. With respect to those connected to Da Vinci's education, specific training fashioned his identity in the artistic scene. Heritage played a role in Da Vinci's career. Da Vinci's high Renaissance context. 1452-1519 led him to combine art, science, and engineering to his work. Da Vinci's wealthy dad educated and trained him with Del Verrocchio. He studied Latin, geometry, and mathematics. By 17, Da Vinci mastered theoretical training, technical skills, drafting, chemistry, metallurgy, plaster casting, leatherwork, mechanics, woodwork metalwork, drawing, paint, sculpture, and modeling. Guild memberships were vital to Renaissance artists. Da Vinci branded his work by shrouding it with secrecy and mystery through storytelling based on personal experience and used it to express inner tur turmoil. Via storytelling, Da Vinci documented recollections that shaped his identity. Exploring, Da Vinci discovered a cave, became terrified a monster may have dwelled there. Da Vinci's drive to quell his curiosity surpassed fear. He explored, sketching mountains and water. Someone made a shield, asked Da Vinci's father to paint it. Da Vinci created a monster spitting flames so furiously, his father bought a new shield for the client. The Milan Duke purchased Da Vinci's now lost shield for 100 ducats. Da Vinci discovered his ability to brand and market his work. The resolution between spiritual conflict, self-identity, and scientific exploration. St. Jerome in the Wilderness, 1480. Mysticism branded Da Vinci's dynamic, individual style. This work recalls ancient mysticism. Earthy imagery defines da Vinci as an analytical thinker. Love of nature is pivotal in his scenes. This work shows conflict. St. Jerome's intense expression and proximity to land stresses contemplative doubt. Religious iconography reveals penitence. He explores Christianity through the Bible, pitting science versus religion. As love of realism brings doubt, the biblical Jerome highlights da Vinci's own struggle for truth. Da Vinci denied the church as all-seeing knowledge. The Mona Lisa is a visual testimony to da Vinci's novel medium and format. Mona Lisa's value links to da Vinci's branding with medium and format. 
Oil on panel, as opposed to tempera on fresco, was new, specific to da Vinci's context. Today, the more expensive medium would be acrylic. The early work, Baptism of Christ, 1475, oil on wood, Uffizi Gallery, Florence, shows da Vinci's mastery of oil. It was begun in tempera and egg, retouched in oil. As for portraiture, it was a feminized form, a form males rarely tackled. The church's art patron, Del Verrocchio, as master. Despite da Vinci's ability to brand and relate art to personal experience, he did not break from the church, which oversaw his tutelage under Del Verrocchio. Da Vinci's stardom featured his development of Verrocchio's spumato technique, the effect of light and shadow on objects. Therefore, training, individual style, and clear emotion contributed to da Vinci's success. A non-existent market made da Vinci shine. Church involvement in da Vinci's public works brings a second important aspect into sharp focus, market, and with market, patronage. Despite da Vinci's growing demand in private sectors as other Renaissance artists, he had no market, because at that time, painting did not offer competition. However, absence of market did not mean da Vinci lacked the capacity to acknowledge or meet the demands for private commissions, as we saw with the shield. Once da Vinci did break loose as an independent painter, he shone against his peers. Royal pat patronage contributed to the Mona Lisa's market value. Da Vinci's placement in a guild as master at 20, collaboration with humanist Verrocchio, Ghirlandao, Perugino, Botticelli, Di Credi, and the Medici, attests to his own elevated status as an artist. Da Vinci's humanist circle also included Ludovico Sforza and Machiavelli, who supported Da Vinci's studies in engineering. Da Vinci's final years were in France, at a home gifted by Francis I. Patron-client relationships were pivotal to the developing art market. Da Vinci was close to his patrons. Beatrice di Este, wife of Ludovico Sforza, Milan leader during French rule, admired Da Vinci. Francis I was present when Da Vinci took his last breath. Da Vinci's heartfelt appreciation for the human anatomy and Mona Lisa was due to his richly intense humanist culture. After market, a third factor involved in da Vinci's fame was application of interest, human anatomy, with content. The portrait subject, the mysterious old status and patronage of his beautiful, fascinating sitter, shook Europe's social scene when discovered in the palace of Francis I decades later. Mona Lisa 1505 the Mona Lisa increased aesthetic value with respect to context, a new world order. Lisa del Giacondo, 1479-1542, a Tuscan noblewoman married into the Gerardini of Montagliari. Her husband Francesco, a silk merchant, commissioned da Vinci for the Mona Lisa. La Giaconda's old money marked a new cultural norm that dealt with civic duty, not material wealth. Lisa's father leased hospital farms to Santa Maria Nuova, a Tuscan hospital. The story of the prestigious Francesco Gerardini is alluring. Francesco was elected in 1499, moved to the Signoria in 1512, became a priori 1524. When the Solarini failed a Medici return to power, they imprisoned Francesco. The Medici released him. Mystery surrounds the Mona Lisa. The various mysteries surrounding this portrait keeps La Giaconda's spirit alive. What are they? One concerns the model. As several women posed for da Vinci, the socialite's identity was not immediately clear. 
Mona Lisa's novelty of format, material, and unique subject matter made for a rare but true and popular portrait. Da Vinci's masterful, Da Vinci masterfully interwove the ancient medium of storytelling with high Renaissance elements of oil on panel and portraiture. His illusionistic use of atmosphere and foreshortened space added to La Gioconda's aura of virtue and mystery, as did her folded hands. This portrait exudes pure soul. Another mystery surrounds the locale of the portrait setting. Its secrecy drew on how illusionism and foreshortening transformed small spaces. It was first believed to be a fictional spot near the Arno River, but was discovered to be in Monte, Montefeltro Marche, near two rivers. Summa de Arithmetica. Da Vinci's friendship with Luca Pacioli found its common ground in a fascination for numbers. Pacioli's treatise, Summa de Arithmetica, included a summary of secret hand symbols. Were La Giaconda's hands folded in such a way to convey a secret message? Conflict and Suspension of the Mona Lisa Commission Mystery surrounds patronage and changes of heart. Sadly, Da Vinci never completed Mona Lisa and took it to France when he moved there. It is not clear if Gerardini changed his mind or Da Vinci himself ended the commission. The conflict probably evolved around a dispute over a wooden panel versus the newer canvas. The End of an Artistic Movement the High Renaissance style ended between Raphael's demise in 1521, two years after da Vinci's death, and the 1527 sack of Rome. Although da Vinci did accomplish great feats throughout his career as a scientist, engineer, and artist, the full scope of his artistic merit was not realized until the High Renaissance style faded. Much of da Vinci's recognition is due to mysteries surrounded, surrounding his unfinished works, as the Mona Lisa. We hope you've enjoyed this discussion on Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Don't forget to like, leave questions, comments below, or hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Bye for now.